So before we get too deep into this topic, I need to make sure to emphasize a few points. First and foremost, what I'm teaching right now is an overview. In reality, when we teach it in the actual grade 12 course, we go into a lot more detail. And in fact, what I'm teaching right now actually goes against a lot of the things I teach there. The purpose of, you, of giving you this lesson is so you have the ability to use it not necessarily fully understand it and use it to its full potential at this point. So you are going to make mistakes. You're not even going to know that you're making mistakes, but you are going to be making some basic mistakes. It's, it's fine. Um, they'll work, but you're going to find that later on when I teach you in the grade 12, there is a way better way of going about things, a way better way about organizing things and whatnot. But we're going to give you the broad overview for this, and I want you to take this with a grain of salt and realize that if you Google something, you may find some things that contradict what I'm saying. Um, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Realize that in the grade 12, you will, you will be getting the full shebang and everything will work out much more clean there. This is just an overview. So. Basically, what we we're going to be talking about here is something called objects and classes. And in modern programming, not all programming, but modern programming, most programs are built on what's called object-oriented design. It means we're kind of compartmentalizing individual elements in a program. So for example, a whole program may be made up of a collection of, let's say for example, we're talking about um, a video game and in that video game you might have a whole bunch of players let's say you're playing destiny or something like that each player is an object and each player has maintains their own data where they are what they're shooting what guns they are holding um, what their score is all this dif all this different information but in reality they're all just the copies of the same player they just have customizations maybe different skins um, different uh, armor and stuff like that but basically they are all the same thing just like we are all human beings right we're all made from the same genetic DNA basic makeup we have variations on us which make us which makes us unique so for example we might have different skin color different eye color um, different accents uh, different heights different weights all these different little things that make us unique well that's what an object is we have a general version and then each different each instance of that object each actual version of that object is unique using its own personal data and that's where the that's what's important here if I make if I make a change to one copy of an object so let's say for example I have a class of students and one student goes and gets their hair cut so the length of their hair changes that doesn't mean anybody else's hair length changes just that one individual right so even though they're all copies of the same original object the human object this they are unique because they maintain their own information they do their own thing they they are, are they're all on their own so basically what an object is, an object is defined by two parts. It's attributes, so it's data, all the information about it. And it's behaviors, what can it do? So for example, a dog is an object of an animal. All right, so the basics, the basics of it are animal. So when a dog makes a sound, its version of making a sound is barking. Whereas a cat might be meowing or a, a cow might be mooing or whatever. Um, but it has its own individual uh, properties that are similar throughout. They all have the, a number of legs. They all have a number of eyes. They all have a size. They all have a weight. They're all very similar in those, in those aspects. Yes, there are some unique elements that separate dogs from cats and cows and wolves and everything else. Uh, but they're all made up of the same basic properties that an animal is, or a mammal for that matter. So uh, before I get into too much detail, let's talk about what a class is. So a class is that general blueprint that defines the basic version, the default model, you, you want to say. So for example, um, if you go to buy a new car, the base model would be like the class. And it's saying, this is the general representation. If you did nothing, changed nothing, added no bells and whistles, this is the basic version. An object is taking that basic version and customizing it and creating a copy of that with its own customization. So for example, um, when you go to buy a car, you may say, I want leather seats, I want it to be blue, and I want it to be, I want it to be a V8. All these different aspects to it, you are customizing, but it's still the same basic car. 
So the way we interpret this, the way we describe this, we say the class is the blueprint for the object. Each object is one copy or one instance, instance the keyword here, one instance of that class with its own individual data. So we are all instances of the human class. And we have our, so we're all objects, but we're all instances of the human class. And we handle our own data and we handle our own functionality. If I walk down the street, that doesn't mean everybody else in the world walks down the street. I handle my own individual data and my own individual functionality. So that's the basics of what a class and an object is. The important thing here is the class is the general layout, the blueprint, and the object is one copy using that blueprint to create itself and then manages its own data. That is the big part. It manages its own data. And that's the basics of uh, object and class.